I am doing my shop launch. It has been, I'm gonna say a journey doing this website. But I really, really, really wanna do calendars this year. Hello everyone! So this week has been especially busy so far. On the 28th of September, which is literally tomorrow, I am doing my shop launch and I'm also doing my newest shop update. You can see my work in progress website in the background just like going through the slideshow. Uh, that's currently like how it's looking at the minute, but I've still got a few things to kind of like tweak and sort out. It has been... I'm gonna say a journey doing this website. It's really not been easy and there's so many things to like learn and research and the amount of times I've Googled stuff like to do with Shopify is insane because it's not so, like it's not just the customization that you've gotta like work out and figure out how you want your website to look. It's also all of the like backend stuff. It's very different from Etsy where it's kind of like simplified I think is the best way to say it and it's a little bit more user-friendly but also there's not so many customizations whereas with Shopify there's a lot more things that you can change around and add so yesterday I spent all day importing just my listings from Etsy and editing them all so that they didn't charge tax on them at the moment I don't need to charge tax on my products so that's good but it means I have to go through 250 listings individually and uncheck the charge tax option, which was very mind numbing. For me personally, I'm not someone who likes to do repetitive tasks. So it was very draining. My back was so sore. And today I still have two pages left of those listings to go through and uncheck and edit them because Shopify is going to be like different to how I place things on Etsy because Shopify is more like the SEO and it's more like neat and tidy whereas I feel like on Etsy when you're doing like your title and your descriptions and things like that you're more trying to think okay how how is somebody gonna what are the different terms that people can use to search for this so you put all of that like in your title which over to like which translated over to Shopify doesn't like really work in my opinion because it looks a little bit messy and unclear about like what the product is. Anyway I could probably talk forever about Shopify because there's just so many little like intricacies involved but today we are actually doing orders. I've got all the products made up already here so we just need to prep up the packages. I've also had a couple of requests from you to film your package as a reel or a TikTok so that is what I'm going to be doing today for a couple of those orders and then the rest you will see in the studio vlog. I also thought it would be really fun to like kind of show you what I'm struggling with currently with my shop. Also by the time this video is up then the shop is going to be live anyway and I probably I'm hoping I would have figured out a few of the things but if you have any tips or advice or anything from your own Shopify website then I would love to know. I still need to do things like add digital files to the brush packs and I have this issue where my portfolio page and my about page are like copied they're like a copy of each other but I don't understand how they're linked because I made the about page separately and then I made the portfolio page separately and then once I finished the portfolio page I noticed that the about page had completely disappeared and then at the end of it all I really want to connect a Royal Mail click and drop account to my Shopify because I use Royal Mail for my shipping and there are actually options on Shopify for DPD and every and the prices aren't actually that bad either but for me personally I am used to Royal Mail. I might try out those options in the future but for now I just really want to kind of keep that similar to what I'm used to so that there's not more things to kind of figure out if that makes sense. And then when I've done everything <laughs> When I've sorted out the website, when everything is looking right, when all the backend stuff is looking right, then I am going to need to test it out and I'm going to test it out on different browsers, different types of computers. On top of all this stuff, so the shop update and the shop launch is going to be tomorrow, Thursday 28th, but then it's so soon to Inktober now, so October the 1st is actually on Sunday, so 
So it's four days away and I have zero <laughs> Inktober pieces ready. I'm actually doing an Inktober challenge, a Witchtober challenge with a bunch of amazing artists over on Instagram. This is the prompt list and if you want to join in then feel free to do any of the prompts that you want to do, the short list, every single day if you are able to. I really wanted to this year do the entire 31 days but with everything else that I've got on and everything else that I've got to do, if I did the entire 31 days, it would be a very exhausting October. But I am going to try my best to do as much as I can while still trying to be making really good quality artwork because when I'm rushing the artwork, I'm never like fully satisfied with it. But a lot of the times if I'm really like taking my time and making like some nice thumbnails and spending half my life drawing it, then I pretty much don't really hate the art piece afterwards. I am getting better with that because I really did struggle with that for a very long time and I still do. There are still artworks that I'll post and I will look at it and be like, I'm not fully happy with that. And generally those are the ones that I'm not spending forever drawing. For Mermaid this year, I didn't actually do all of the prompts, but I made all the thumbnails for every single day, I think it was. And I did quite a lot of drawings and I love, I think, literally all of them except maybe two. And even those two, I'm not like hating them or anything. I still like them. Uh, they're just not like, I'm just not like, ah, oh, I'm so happy with how that came out looking. <laughs> I feel like I've kind of started rambling a lot, so I'm gonna get back on track. While we're packaging everything, I also wanted to let you know that when the website goes live, I am actually also gonna be selling the phone grips again, which I'm so excited for. So if you have been waiting to order a phone grip, then this is your chance. At the moment, I have stock of every phone grip, but some of them are lower stock, so be quick in getting it. The one that's lower stock at the moment is actually the Pink Radiant Moon. And I kind of feel like I should have just got the Pink Radiant Moon as all of the moon grips because it's the most loved one. But I also really like the yellow on its own without the gradients. So if there aren't any stock when you're watching this, then you can still get the yellow moon one, hopefully, if they're still in stock. But if enough people like them and buy them, then I will consider restocking them. So as you know, I very recently did a little like pre-shop update, shop update, and I have been blown away by all your love of these products. And it makes me so happy because then I get to make the product because how I work everything is I will, I'll design the product, I'll like put the outline on it, I'll import it into my cutting program, into Cricut Design Space, and then I'll lay it all out on the page and everything, and I'll make sure everything is okay, like everything looks okay. And then what I do is I make up the product listing digitally because I feel like it does a better job of showing you the actual colors that are expected when it's like a digital image because we're looking at the screen and those digital colors are gonna be more, I guess, vibrant and more representative of what the actual printout looks like. Whereas when you print out something and then you go to take a picture, I feel like the photo doesn't really capture the colors or the quality of the product. I wish I could do this for everything though, but I sadly cannot. Things like pins and notebooks have to be photographed in like real life. So <laughs> if you are starting an Etsy shop or if you have an Etsy shop or you have a shop, I would suggest trying to do those digital product photos because I found that ever since I started doing them, not only do my product listings look more professional and cleaner, but I also find that I actually end up saving time and my back because when I'm taking the product photos of actual physical items, then I'm like hunched over the desk, like trying to get all the light right, trying to move past the camera holder, the stand, and like trying to like squeeze myself in there and just, it is very uncomfortable and a very, very exhausting process as well as having those issues. <laughs> I find when I'm taking actual product photos as well, like the lighting is never perfect, it's never good enough. And the light in England is pretty much gray most of the time. So it's not really doing us any favors in our product photos. I actually need to buy some more ring lights and things to kind of like brighten up the area. One thing I have also been thinking about doing lately, so 
There's a lot of like information for you guys this time and a lot of like behind the scenes of what's been going on but I really 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 want to do calendars this year and I have found a manufacturer I just need to make up the calendar now and actually put those orders in. I'm not sure how many calendars to get because I don't want to get too little and then there's not enough for everybody but I also don't want to get too many and it's just a bit of a predicament. Also for the new shop website that I'm doing, I'm going to include some past Patreon products that haven't been released before that were previously exclusive only to Patreon. Things like the Hello Kitty stickers, the Hello Kitty prints. I don't know if I have any Hello Kitty sticker sheets left. I do have, I think, very, very few left of those and the postcards and everything, I think I'm going to try and get those onto the shop website as well. Again, it's just like a lot of product listings to do, which can be pretty time consuming, even doing them digitally, although it does save a little bit of time. And then going back to the Witchtober prompt list, for anyone curious, it's called Mystical Witchtober and it's a 31 day prompt list with a 7 day short list as well, so you can choose which you want to follow. But going back to that, I really want to do what I did for Mermaid because I feel like it really helped my workflow a lot. And for Mermaid, I spent I think like an entire day just looking at Pinterest, getting references. And then I would put it all into a VizRef folder and I just sketched a bunch of thumbnails which I think really helped me overall to have like some really nice drawings ready. Sometimes I feel like when I'm like drawing something just from the drawing and I'm not like doing little thumbnails or little ideas then I'm not always happy with how everything is looking. I feel like I can get better composition and choose the best look for the drawing when I'm doing those thumbnails. So that's what I want to do for Witchtober and I had someone ask does it have to be purely witches and although it is Witchtober and I think everybody is doing purely witches themselves, if you are inspired by a prompt and you want to draw something else that's not a witch then that's totally fine as well. I really wanted to do one of my witch characters for the entire series of drawings like I did for Mermaid with Ocean. I don't know, I also really like the idea of doing a bunch of different characters as well so I'm going to see how the thumbnails go and see if if I want to follow the path of just one character or if I want to do a bunch of different characters. I do already have some witch OCs anyway and it would be nice to actually like revisit them all and kind of like make some new drawings of them but what I found with Mermaid is what was like fun about it was that I was kind of like developing Ocean's character and giving more of like a backstory to her like who she's friends with that kind of thing what does she do? By the way, if you like, if you like the Mermaid series, you like Ocean, then I do actually have a bunch of her prints in my Etsy shop and also my website shop. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!